You're now joining part two of this message, which is already in progress, with Pastor William Whitfield, Senior Pastor of Faith, Hope, and Love Ministries, and Retreat. So the scriptures say that they have done abominable things. Abominable things. Abominable things means gross things. Things that you nor I would even consider or conspire to do or think about doing things that are just grossly wrong in the eyesight of God. Things that they perceive or conceive in their thinking or their hearts. They do and they follow out with no remorse, no regret, no feeling of being incriminated in such a thing. But they move forward, they march forward as though whatever they do has no consequences. Even down to the point that they don't believe that the laws of the land should exist. But they know the consequences of the laws of the land. In some regards, they have far more respect for the laws of the land than they do for God himself. Which means that their hearts are truly wicked. And they say in their hearts, there is none, listen, there is none that doeth good. God looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand, that did seek God. Listen, verse 3, every one of them has gone back. They are all together become filthy, dirty. They don't even have the common decency or mentality to say that I even need to repent or ask for forgiveness of sins committed. And we all commit sins, whether knowingly or unknowingly, although it is our objective to live sinless. But there are times that even those of us that are even in the most perfect states of mind, we offend sometimes with our hearts, with our mouths, mouths, with a look or something that we may not know. Or we say something that is out of the way that we should go back to our brothers and sisters and repent of and we don't do it. But this person sees no need. They never feel the convicting power of God. They never feel convicted of any wrong that they've done. And if you ask them about, don't you think that you need to apologize for what? They have no clue that they've done something wrong. And you trying to convince them could be just a waste of your time. I'm not telling you not to. But it could be an, uh, ultimately a royal waste of your time. And every one of them is gone back. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Not one at all. Remember the story of Abraham when God was talking to him about what he was about to do to Sodom and Gomorrah. And God and Abraham continuously asked him if you could find X number of people. And he got down to a ridiculously low amount. But God still destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because he couldn't even find not one righteous soul in the city. Regardless of the sin, he could not find one righteous soul in the city. Verse 4, have the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Don't they understand? It's a question. Have the workers of iniquity no knowledge? They have no knowledge of God or who he is? No, they do not. They have heard of him, but they have altogether rejected him. They don't want him in their thought processes. They don't want to hear about God. They don't want to have any knowledge of God because remember I said a few minutes ago, they've already concluded in their heart that there is no existence. He does not exist. They already declared the non-existence of God. And as a result, who eat up my people as they eat bread, they have not called upon God. They don't want to call on him. There were they in great fear where no fear was for God has scattered the bones of him that encamped against thee. So it's talking about how God has scattered the bones of those that are foolish, that have encamped against thee. But let us go to Psalms 14, and you'll find that the same thought processes are are even repeated here. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. Vile. There is no... (coughs) 
excuse me. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understands and any who seeks God. All have turned away and all have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one, the Bible says. Stay tuned for part three of this message, which is already in progress with Pastor Whitfield.